Welcome back to the Identity Jedi Show. We are here in Identiverse live in Las Vegas for Identiverse 2023. It's been a great week so far. We had all these interviews for you. We saved the best for last because he's a 49ers fan. So that's where he's used to being. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Aiden Parisian, welcome, man. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. I'm glad we finally got a chance to catch up. Yep. We've been missing each other playing tag and like slapping to have five it's across the airport as we've been flying all these miles the last couple of months. But happy to catch up with you. Just introduce yourself real quick, who you're with, what you got going on for people who don't know you yet. Sure. Aiden Parisian, I am the chief customer officer at FastPath. So FastPath, been at for about six years. We were for a long time, a startup that was bootstrapped, focused on segregation of duties, which is an adjacent space to the identity space, very focused on financial risk and granular access inside of applications. We entered the identity space about a year ago, we bought a company called Lideo, and so we're here this week at Identiverse 2023, showing off what we got. All right. So talk to me a little bit about where you guys are now with that acquisition, because you're about, it's not even quite a year yet, maybe about... Half a year in? Two Two months short, so August August last year. Nice. So as anybody technical knows, getting products to work together is tough. Right. So we've got a really good dev team. Most folks don't know this, but farm kids make really good developers. Okay. And so we're just this week showing off our new identity product, which is a parity match to the product that IDEO had prior. Okay. And so then that'll come out later this year. So we're pretty excited about what we've got. And then that is an adjacency to what we've done traditionally. As you know, we used to partner with SailPoint and Hitachi ID and others because the segregation of duties piece had a natural lead in to identity. We've seen now that really, you know, SOD is a feature of an identity program. So right. for us to be able to release this as a cohesive platform is pretty exciting. Awesome. What kind of take me back to the thought process when you guys were looking at this and said, okay, we want to make this move with IDEO more strategically when you looked at that and said, this is the way we want to go. You know, you talked about it a little bit because, you know, SOD seems like a feature of an identity platform, but those kind of strategic conversations, like we want to do this because we want to position ourselves here. Yeah. So we looked at from a product. So I used to run product at FastPath. As part of that, we looked at what our customers were asking for. So mm-hmm. some of that is the list of features that they want. Some comes up in conversations, sales calls or customer success calls. In addition to that, we ran analytics through a survey. So we looked at the marketplace. We surveyed a number of people. We did a couple of surveys. We looked at the traditional buyers we used to sell to from a finance standpoint. And then we also went and looked at buyers that were identity folks, people who were using identity tools. In both those surveys, we used a, a methodology called outcome-driven innovation. So Tony Wick wrote a book called What Customers Want in the 90s. It's popularized that that's become a common methodology within the product space these days. And so what that does is you look at the marketplace and you ask a couple of questions around what are you using, what do you need, and then how well is what do you use serve your needs, the bigger the gap the more opportunity there is. Right. When we looked at that analysis, we saw a natural overflow. We saw everybody in the identity space saying what they really wanted was some of this granular access. Same goes for folks in the finance space were saying they needed identity tools. And really what we saw is from a persona perspective, those in the identity space weren't serving the constituency inside of audit because that wasn't a traditional buyer and right. vice versa. And so we had already kind of gotten a teaser on that when we'd had identity companies reach out to be partners. So that just kind of rounded that out for us, told us that the, the, the story was true. Since we've done that, everyone we've gone to in the marketplace, everybody validates it repeatedly. Nice. People see it, they go, it makes a ton of sense. So that combined overlap, especially with how robust we were as a market leader in the SOD space, I think there's a lot of problems we can solve for. So going forward, right, it's, you know, I talked about this maybe last year, I called it you know, the platform wars, right? We were going to see all this consolidation happen yep. with identity platforms, everybody kind of arming up to offer more of these features to customers. Yep. And so now that we're kind of like full-fledged into that and you guys are kind of, you know, entering that realm as well, what is your outlook on that? As you guys look at, you know, let's say like the next 12 months, just yep. the, the next year of identity of, of how these kind of platforms, what do you guys see from your perspective and, and what you offer uniquely to that market? And second kind of question to that is, What's been the customer's reaction to this that, you, that yep. you've seen so far? So I think we see the same thing most people see, which is this market traditionally was kind of a variety of things. And then it started to boil down to IAM from an authentication standpoint and IGA from an authorization standpoint. I think if you come to a show like this or you go to Gartner's IAM show, really it's an IAM play and everything's starting to become a feature right. of IAM programs. I think to your point, the platform part moves away you know, Gartner likes to talk about the converged platform and using different products. 
That said, from a UX standpoint, if you look at business to consumer, mm -hmm. people are expecting a smooth platform experience. They want a single UI. So almost if you split the two concepts, who cares what the platform is as long as what I use looks the same, feels the same. Right. That seems to be where, where that is headed is TBD, right? We've talked about Toma Bravo has an opinion in this space. <laughs> yep. Insight has an opinion in this space. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. For us, we're definitely moving all of our things into a single platform because, again, we feel that what customers are wanting is that that single experience. But you walk the floor here at Identiverse and you see a lot of, of features that are products. And so whether or not those converge into one or whether or not those stay still, it's hard to tell. Some of that's market dynamics. Right. Right, is the cash in the market. Yeah. And then some of that is what customers are asking for. What we noticed at the Gartner show is if you looked at things like, right, you've got RBAC and you've got PBAC and then you look at ABAC, is that real or not? Right. Some of the marketing is so far ahead of the curve of what people actually can buy and use <laughs> yes. that it's great. But it's like the analogy I always use is people buy the TRD Pro, which has got the cameras on each wheel to make sure when you're rock climbing, you're on the right rock and then they drive it to the mall. <laughs> Same thing is there's a lot of features out there that people are buying that they don't maybe need. Right. So whether or not there's a rationalization in the market, we'll see. Whenever things squeeze like this, money gets a little tighter. Yeah. People are going to buy less of the camera pointing at the wheels. And more and of the car with the trunk space. So right. that when they go to the mall, they take stuff home. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see what that turns into. The bigger trunk space for the Costco runs now, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd be interesting to see. I'm pretty sure somebody's done this research report. Totally aside, like, when we get to, like, recession-like environments like this, I wonder how much Costco memberships, like, increase, right? Because, like, it, it, it happens every time, right? Things start getting tight. People want to go to Costco, people want to go to Sam's Club, yep. right? So just an aside. It's also good for the business, the original ARR model. Yep, exactly. So somebody please research it. I'm pretty sure somebody will send me the comments like, well, actually. <laughs> so early early takeaway so far from Identiverse, customer conversations you have, like what have you been, what's, what's some of the feedback you've been getting? I, a lot of that. I mean, a couple of the comments we've heard is people kind of dazed eyes looking around the room and saying, I don't know what all this stuff does. Right. I think they're having a hard time wrapping their head around some of the new concepts. You get into you know dynamic runtime authorization. Again, really cool idea. Right. Right. Chat GPT generate right, we're talking like magic in a box, I hit a button yeah. and things work. We've had a couple of customers though say what you and I would probably say, which is that the reality of actually applying that is wildly different than buying it. Right. Right. And to, to have the sophistication as an organization actually take that magic and do something with it, that's going to be harder. And what we've seen, and I've talked to a few other folks at the show this week who are seeing the same thing, is especially in a market like this, sales cycles are becoming more rigorous. Mm -hmm. Customers are spending more time validating do they actually need what they're looking at. Right. Finance departments are asking for them to do the extra validation before they spend the money. So I think it's I think it's the same same thing. I mean, it's I think people know identity is important. They're not sure which parts are important, and there's so mm. much noise in the system. It's hard for them to pull the pieces apart to understand what's what. Right. <clears throat> you know that's that's interesting. Like I, I've had conversations about like the last time we saw something like this for the identity industry, right? So it's, you know the 2008 2009 financial crisis happens. Things the same things. Things are tightened up, but the difference at that time was like identity was so focused around the administration side of it, yep. like so, so IGA, the SOD, and it's yep. like, so it doesn't matter, like what's your budget, like you're doing this, yep. right? So like, it was like, okay. So identity didn't really get a hit, the, the sell cycles, they get longer, yep. it, was, it was a little tougher, but it was like, it wasn't a, I'm not going to buy this, it's like, right. I'm going to buy it, right. let's just figure out what this looks like. Yep. And so that kind of allowed identity to kind of make it through and come here. And now, if you look at it, having the same thing, but it's, I, I mean, for those of us who've been in it a long time, we're happy to see that more people know about it yep. and the conversations are there. Yep. But now we've saturated with them with all these different things, right? Yep. Like literally all these companies say the same thing. What yep. do you do? Yep. I do. Yep. Identity security. What is that? Right. right? And everybody has a different answer. Yep. And so now when it's it's it is like I've got to match feature to actual function, yep. like yep. this is my problem. Yeah. I need to know how much of my problem you're actually going to solve. Yep. Not what you're going to sell to me, like how much of it is actually going to be solved. Yep. So I would expect like longer POCs, right? And now when you go to a POC, I'm, I would expect customers actually come to you with use cases like, okay, well, right. here's the 10 things I want to see you do, yep. right? Whereas, yep. you know, last couple of years, like do this. Okay, that looks good. Yep. But so I'm going to be interested to see like how, number one, the marketers respond to it. Yep. Do we... I don't want to say dumb down. Do we simplify the messaging yep. and make it more direct yep. and get to the point? Yep. Like this is what this does and this is what it solves. Yeah. Because 
I, I do see a lot of confusion in the customers not knowing what's what. Yeah. But I'm also seeing, and I, and I want to get your take on this from the leadership perspective, not necessarily always CISOs, but maybe the lieutenants, right. as security and identity are kind of coming together, like what does this mean and how does this look, yeah. right? So yes, what's the most immediate thing I need to do, but we've been doing identity for a while now, so yeah. like what's next? Show me the added benefit yeah. that I get in continuing to invest in this. Yeah. Because up until now, we haven't spoken to it like that. Like security, like we know the benefits of why I have to keep investing. Yep. Why do I need to keep investing in identity? Have you had any of those like type of topics yes. and conversations with customers? Yep. And that's, so our value pitch as a company in the SOD space was always about solving complex problems simply, right? Our co-founders believe that you shouldn't have to sit in a conference room at somebody's office for 12 months to make something work. And so it was always about how do we build software that's easy to use, it can be used right away, short time to value. Same concept in this space is I think we're at a point where we're going to start to see a rationalization of the cost. Because to your point, you know, look at IAM, for example, right? Early days, IAM was unique. The idea of doing SAML and doing authentications and passing off tokens, now it's a commodity, right? right? Anybody can do it. Half the products out there have their own version of it. Yeah. I think IGA and the identity lifecycle piece is next because people are starting to look and say, this isn't that complicated. Nope. You know, why does it have to be this expensive? Why does it have to take that long? That's part of what we're looking at from a market standpoint is we feel that you, know, you should be able to go live in 90 days, 180 days. It should be easy to do. You should be able to do it with a small team. You should be able to do it with a partner that's agile. You shouldn't have to spend you know, two and a half million dollars to get something live like that. I think that's part of this is you'll start to see that the problem is, is from a vendor perspective, growth is almighty. Yeah. So then what do you do next? Right. So if I, if I have to rationalize the cost that I am, I've got to do a new trick because I need to drive more revenue. Right. right. Same problem that got SVB in trouble is where do you try to find the new money? And I right. think it's part of what you see on the floor is people stretching out into the space mm -hmm. to say what's viable in the marketplace. The application of that, though, is going to be hard. And I think back to your point about the cycles and sea level. It gets hard to sell magic beans at some point, right? Times are tough and right. you're, you as a company are hitting 70% of your number and you're being asked to go spend money on an identity program and to go back to your finance department and say, I want these 12 things. They're going to look and go, well, those first three I get. What's all this? Right. And that's what's going to start to rationalize it. That'll, be, that'll have an interesting dynamic depending on how long the market squeeze goes. Potentially that starts to squeeze some folks out, right? Yeah. You're going to get companies that, that can't make the bread they made before because they're not able to, to sell the things that they, that they thought they could. I think you're going to see other companies that may be sitting a little fat from a cost perspective and the margin's thinner than they want. And as that price comes down, that squeeze comes. It'd be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, definitely. It, it's going to... I love innovation. I love disruption, right? So I... I initially I said it's going to be a rocky two years, but I, th I think it's going to be a fun two years because I think this is also the time that... As technologists, as entrepreneurs, right? This is where, like, this this is it, right? This is where you dig in because this mm -hmm. is where you get to figure out, like, what's what's the next innovative thing? How do I make this better, yep. right? And it's not, and it, it's past building a better mousetrap. It's yep. like, how do I get rid of the mousetrap, yep. right? Like, does the mousetrap really need it? And so that's where this comes out. And we, yep. if you've seen this in business cycles throughout history, it it's not just identity; it's anything. Yep. This is where the time where you really have to innovate, and when you have a market squeeze, like. Not only have to be innovative from like how you design it, you yep. got to be innovative in how you build it, yep. and how you scale it, and how yep. you take it to market, yep. right? Because you're not going to get, no. you know, a blank check to go write it. It's like go to the grocery store yep. and give me hundred dollars worth of groceries, yep. but you got ten dollars, yep. right? <laughs> well, the so, budget and that budget gets squeezed every year, yeah. right? And when it's unique and it's especially when times are great, right? And, you know, you go two years ago when the market's high, there's money to spend everywhere. Right. And the threat is so big, and everybody hears it from a board member perspective during COVID, right? All of a sudden, it's this 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 topic that everybody wants to talk about. It's easy to cordon off those dollars, but over time, what happens to all budgets? Right. All budgets get squeezed. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter what budget it is, well, no. except for maybe sales' budget. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you, with the, we got two days left at Identiverse. What's, what's something you're interested in, in seeing? And have you, wait, first, have you had a chance to check out any sessions? I have. Okay. I have, yeah. I, I continue to be interested in the runtime dynamic stuff. Okay. Right? You know, the idea of being able to do, especially from our perspective as an IGA organization, authorizations are big. But the idea, the idea that you can do a dynamic runtime risk-based authentication, the fact you can do authorization and assertions and that you can hand that off, that concept to me is powerful because I do think that's probably the next evolution is if you can actually create an easy-to-use and easy-to-implement version of that, it does solve a lot of problems right. it's, it's, it's as it's running. And 
I hate to talk about generative AI because everything's AI right now, but the reality is, is that is a thing. Yeah. The, machine, the ability to, to shorten the cycle on machine learning, right? Machine learning used to be the bastion of really intelligent PhDs. If you can make it available for an average developer to build, you're going to start to put predictive functionality into everything. Right. And once that happens, if you're now saying, well, if you're going to log into your bank account and you log in from Texas and normally you sit in New York, and that's going to have a reaction. The ability for all products to have that, there's, obviously there's going to be a boom in that space. Yeah. You look at Siam and what people are doing to try to reduce the amount of lead time there is to get somebody registered, right? Because there's a cookie at the end, right? There's, there's some sort of service you're buying or there's something that you're engaging with. So the dollars are there. That's become a new version of a sales cycle that didn't exist before. Right. That combination of elements is pretty interesting because it's a space that hasn't really been fleshed out much in the past. And it'll be interesting to see what people do to solve it. You know, shows like this are great to hear some of those pitches. Part of that is you're hearing a lot of vendor marketing pitches. Yeah. It's been actually nice in the hallways to hear what people actually think. Think, right, yeah. And that's, those are the conversations I'm excited about. Yeah, yeah. No, that's actually, I think one of the things that I would like to see, well, I always appreciate at this conference is the hallways conversations, especially yep. at this one, because it's not, it's not just, it's practitioners. Like, it's, it's everybody, right? So those, yeah. those hallway conversations are always great. I'd like to see us kind of commoditize that a little bit more and kind of like make that a thing. Yeah. So I'll probably, I'll probably hit up Andy about that, you yeah. know, maybe next year. Like maybe we do like a, like you have the sessions, but then like, like a, like a general like town hall open session, yeah. right? Where those ideas can kind of get changed. So yeah. look, man, I want to be cognizant of your time. So I'm going to wrap up. Appreciate you coming through, man. It's Absolutely. good to see you. Yeah. We'll talk about the 49ers another time. Maybe in the next season. Yeah. <laughs> the next season. <laughs> All right. So for that, that is the Identity Jedi show. We are signing off here in Vegas. Identiverse 2023 has been a great week. Check you guys out next time.